Hello, good evening, welcome to St Mary's Halesworth. It's six o'clock on Thursday the 14th of November. I'm reading Common Worship Daily Prayer from the Church of England for the season All Saints to Advent. You'll find the words in that section of the book at the Church of England's website, Aremus Daily Prayer, downloadable as app for Apple or Android device. You're welcome to join me analog styly in the building eight and six or eight or six Tuesday to Saturday uh, throughout the week. If you're just in the town, pop your nose around the door. But if you're coming any distance, do just drop me a line uh, to make sure I'm going to be here on that particular evening. I might be out at a governor's meeting or something else. You may join by Zoom. The Blythe Valley Church's website and Facebook page have the codes. And uh, we're live streaming on Facebook. The audio will be on my Dominic Doble YouTube channel in due course once I've uh, stitched it to a still image and uh, uploaded it. Welcome, however you are joining us. Following the book, uh, Samuel Seabury, you might find some information about him on the 14th of November. Uh, under that date, halfway through amongst the Saints' Days and Festivals, being simply a commemoration, there won't be much by way of adjustment, but... Uh, just so you know, and I shall read something from Kindle edition celebrating the saints in due course. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Your faithful servant bless you. They make known the glory of your kingdom. Blessed are you, sovereign God, our light and our salvation. To you be glory and praise forever. Now as darkness is falling, wash away our transgressions. Cleanse us by your refining fire and make us temples of your Holy Spirit. By the light of Christ, dispel the darkness of our hearts and make us ready to enter your kingdom where songs of praise forever sound. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. The Isaac Watts Hymn. Give me the wings of faith to rise within the veil and see the saints above. How great their joys, how bright their glories be. Once they were mourning here below and wet their couch with tears. They wrestled hard as we do now with sins and doubts and fears. I asked them whence their victory came. They with united breath ascribed their conquest to the Lamb, their triumph to his death. <clears throat> they marked the footsteps that he trod. His zeal inspired their breast and following their incarnate God possessed the promised rest. Our glorious leader claims our praise for his own pattern given while a long cloud of witnesses show the same path to heaven. That this evening may be holy, good and peaceful. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. You'll find the Psalter at the back of the book. The Psalms are pointed this evening, numbers 42 and 43. Again, unusually, they're uh, co-terminus, or one follows after the other. Quite often during the seasons, we skip about a bit between different Psalms and different parts of the Psalter to uh, maintain the theme of the season, <clears throat> but uh, 42 and 43, obviously they should run straight through. Uh, because they are um, pretty much the same psalm with the same refrains uh, actually written into the verses as we make our way through 7, 14 and uh, 5, 6, we'll just read straight through and just say the glory be at the end, having read them both, running one into the other. As the deer longs for the water brooks, so my soul longs for you, O God. My soul is the thirst for God, even for the living God. When shall I come before the presence of God? My tears have been my bread day and night, while all day long they say to me, Where is now your God? Now, when I think on these things, I pour out my soul, how I went with the multitude and led the procession to the house of God, with the voice of praise and thanksgiving among those who kept holy day. 
Why are you so full of heaviness, O my soul? And why are you so disquieted within me? O put your trust in God, for I will yet give him thanks with the help of my countenance and my God. My soul is heavy within me, therefore I will remember you from the land of Jordan and from Hermon and the hill of Mizar. Deep called to deep in the thunder of your waterfalls, all your breakers and waves have gone over me. The Lord will grant his loving kindness in the daytime. Through the night, sorry, through the night his song will be with me, a prayer to the God of my life. I say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? And why go I so heavily while the enemy oppresses me? As they crush my bones, my enemies mock me, while all day long they say to me, where is now your God? Why are you so full of heaviness, O my soul? And why are you so disquieted within me? We put your trust in God, for I will yet give him thanks with the help of my countenance and my God. Give judgment for me, O God, and defend my cause against an ungodly people. Deliver me from the deceitful and the wicked. For you are the God of my refuge. Why have you cast me from you? And why go I so heavily while the enemy oppresses me? O send out your light and your truth that they may lead me, and bring me to your holy hill and to your dwelling. That I may go to the altar of God, to the God of my joy and gladness. And on the lyre I will give thanks to you, O God, my God. Why are you so full of heaviness, O my soul? And why are you so disquieted within me? I put your trust in God, for I will yet give him thanks, who is the help of my countenance and my God. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Scrolling on to a song of God's assemble, turning back in our books to evening prayer, all saints to Advent. We have come before the throne of God to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. We have come before God's holy mountain, to the heavenly Jerusalem, the city of the living God. We've come before countless angels making festival, before the assembly of the firstborn citizens of heaven. We've come before God, who is judge of all, before the spirits of the just made perfect. We have come before Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant. We are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, so let us give thanks and offer to God acceptable worship. Full of reverence and awe, for our God is a consuming fire. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. We come before the throne of God to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. A reading from the Concordat established between the Scottish bishops and Dr. Samuel Seabury, Presbyter in Connecticut, 15th November 1784. The wise and gracious providence of merciful God, having put into the hearts of the Christians the Episcopal persuasion in Connecticut in North America, to desire that the blessing of a free, valid, and purely ecclesiastical episcopacy might be communicated to them, and a church regularly formed in that part of the Western world upon the most ancient and primitive model. And application having been made for this purpose by the Reverend Dr. Samuel Seabury, Presbyter in Connecticut, to the Right Reverend to the Bishops of the Church in Scotland. The said bishops, having taken this proposal into their serious consideration, most heartily concurred to promote and encourage the same so far as lay in their power, and accordingly began the pious and good work recommended to them by complying with the request of the clergy in Connecticut and advancing the said Dr. Samuel Seabury to the high order of the Episcopate. At the same time, earnestly praying that this work of the Lord thus happily begun might prosper in his hands, till it should please the great and glorious head of the church to increase the number of bishops in America and send forth more laborers into that part of his harvest. Animated with this pious hope and earnestly desirous to establish a bond of peace and holy communion between the two churches, the bishops of the church in Scotland, whose names are underwritten, having had full and free conference with the bishop Seabury after his consecration and advancement as aforesaid, agreed with him on the following articles, which are to serve as a concordat or bond of union between the Catholic remainder of the ancient church of Scotland and the now rising church in the state of Connecticut. They agree in thankfully receiving and humbly and heartily embracing the whole doctrine of the gospel as revealed and set forth in the Holy Scriptures. They agree in believing this church to be the mystical body of Christ, of which he alone is the head and supreme governor, and that under him the chief ministers or managers of the affairs of this spiritual society are those called bishops, whose exercise of their sacred office being independent of all lay powers, it follows of consequence that their spiritual authority and jurisdiction cannot be affected by any lay deprivation. They agree in desiring that there may be as near as a conformity in worship and discipline established between the two churches as is consistent with the different circumstances and customs of nations. As the celebration of the Holy Eucharist or administration of the sacrament of the body and blood of Christ is the principal bond of union among Christians as well as the most solemn act of worship in the Christian church, the bishops aforesaid agree in desiring that there be as little variance here as possible 
and though the bishop, Scottish bishops are very far from prescribing to their brethren in this matter, I cannot help ardently wishing that Bishop Seabury would endeavour all he can, consistently with peace and prudence, to make the celebration of this venerable mystery conformable to the most primitive doctrine and practice in that respect, which is the pattern the Episcopal Church of Scotland has copied after in her communion office, and which it has been the wish of some of the most eminent divines of the Church of England that she also had more closely followed than she seems to have done since she gave up her first reformed liturgy used in the reign of King Edward VI, between which and the form of the Episcopal Church of Scotland there is no difference in any point which the primitive church reckoned essential to the right administration of the Holy, See Holy Eucharist. The bishops aforesaid do hereby jointly declare in the most solemn manner that in the whole of this transaction they have nothing else in view but the glory of God and the good, good of his church. So to our next reading, Isaiah 7 from 1 to 17. Isaiah is in the Hebrew Scriptures. It opens the prophecy section. So if you open your Bible to, uh, halfway through, uh, if you've got both covenants in front of you, um, you should find yourself uh, faced with the Psalms. Then moving towards the back, after uh, Proverbs and Song of Songs and the like, you should find Isaiah. And within Isaiah chapter 7, large number 7 in the margin, chapter 7, and we're reading from verse 1 to verse 17. Scroll back to it from the Canticle of the Song of God's Assembled that uh, we read together a moment ago if you're following electronically. In the days of Ahaz, son of Jotham, son of Uzziah, king of Judah, king Rezin of Aram, and king Pekah of Ramalia of Israel, went in to attack Jerusalem, but could not mount an attack against it. When the house of David heard that Aram had allied itself with Ephraim, the heart of Ahaz and the heart of his people shook as the trees of the forest shake before the wind. Then the Lord said to Isaiah, Go out to meet Ahaz, you and your son, Shear Jashub, at the end of the conduit in the upper pool on the highway to the fuller's field, and say to them, Take heed, be quiet, do not fear, and do not let your heart be faint because of these two smouldering stumps of firebrand, because of the fierce anger of Rezin, Aram, and the son of Ramalia, because Aram with Ephraim and the son of Ramalia has plotted evil against you, saying, Let us go up against Judah and cut off Jerusalem and conquer it for ourselves and make the son of Tibial king in it. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, it shall not stand and it shall not come to pass, for the head of Aram is Damascus and the head of Damascus is Rezin. Within sixty-five years, Ephraim will be shattered, no longer a people. That of Ephraim is Samaria and the head of Samaria is the son of Ramalia. If you do not stand firm in faith, you shall not stand at all. Again, the Lord spake to Ahaz, saying, Ask a sign of the Lord your God, let it be deep as Sheol or high as heaven. But Ahaz said, I will not ask and will not put the Lord to the test. Then Isaiah said, Here then, O house of David, isn't too little for you to weary mortals, that you weary my God also. Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Look, the young woman is with child and shall bear a son and shall name him Emmanuel. You shall eat curds and honey by the time he knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good. For before the child knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good of the land, before whose kings you are in dread will be deserted. They will bring on you and on your people and on your ancestral house such days as have not come since the day that Ephraim departed from Judah, the king of Assyria. <clears throat> so, um, basically, we've got an alliance between two neighbouring heads of state, city-states. They're going to attack uh, Jerusalem. Uh, the rulers in Jerusalem are afraid. Isaiah is sent to tell them not to worry. Uh, and I have to say, I don't quite understand this head of Aram is Damascus, head of Damascus is Rezin, and head of Ephraim is Samaria, the head of Samaria is the son of Ramalia. Bit business. Uh, but we are told that they are um, smouldering stumps and uh, not to be feared. And uh, that a child is born at the moment when this was written. And before that child um, comes of age, comes to their bar mitzvah, knows good and evil. Um, so what's that? Within 10 years, 12 years, 14 years, thereabouts, um, these kings of whom the people of Jerusalem are afraid um, will be no more. And uh, we might find, uh, we might in our lives at the moment be fearful. Uh, we might look at our country, look at America, look at uh, Ukraine, Russia, look at Sudan, uh, the Middle East, <coughs> um, the state of climate breakdown. And think, my goodness, Spaniards, for example, looking at all those floods. My goodness, this is just it's all too much. Um, we're going to be overwhelmed. Um, but this message, if we're transferring it, is that um, basically these fears will pass. I guess we as individuals might be caught up in it, but there will be a future. Whether it's the future of uh, God's rule being established, whether it's an end to the crisis, whether it gets worse before it gets better. But there will be a future, a light at the end of the tunnel, whether we witness that or those that come after us. Uh, but there is hope. And uh, that's something we have to hold on to uh, as believers, whether that's hope in the afterlife, whether it's hope in this life. Um, nevertheless, Isaiah was encouraging God's people and those in charge of God's people uh, not to be fearful of the apparent um, aggressor. 
Matthew 5 from 38, then our next reading. We scroll onto that if we're following electronically in the Holy Bible. Matthew opens the second covenant. So if you turn two thirds of the way through, uh, you should find Matthew there. If it doesn't look like Matthew, Mark, Luke or John, uh, move towards the back. Gospel of Matthew, we look at the large number five in the margin, chapter number five, and we're reading from verse 38. Book of Matthew, chapter five, verse 38. The verse numbers are the small numbers in the text, of course. Jesus said to the crowds, you've heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, but I say to you, do not resist an evildoer. But if anyone strikes you on the right cheek, turn the other also. And if anyone wants to see you, take your coat and take your coat to give your cloak as well. If anyone forces you to go one mile, go also the second mile. Give to anyone who begs from you and do not refuse anyone who wants to borrow from you. You've heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbour and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you so that you may be the children of your father in heaven. For he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good and sends rain on the righteous and on the unrighteous. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And you greet only your brothers and sisters. What more are you doing than others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same? Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. <coughs> so we continue in these uh, statements of Jesus that have been remembered and uh, compiled in one almighty address, the Sermon on the Mount, so-called. And... Uh, We're basically seeing Jesus either reinterpreting or um, underlining, reinforcing uh, the received wisdom of the rabbis of the time, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, perhaps to the fore. Not necessarily actually Jesus' time they followed on, but the Pharisees were very keen to make sure they applied the law as fully as they could. <clears throat> so um, Jesus has just said, um, yesterday we heard him saying, if you um, look at somebody and you fancy them, they need to pull your eye out because it's better to go to hell um, maimed than it is to better to go to heaven maimed than to hell complete. And yet here he says, you've heard it said an eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. But I say, don't resist an evil do it. If you're hit on the right cheek, show them your left. Um, if somebody take, wants to take your coat, give them their, your cloak. If anyone forces you to go to mile, go the second, the extra mile. If anyone begs from you, give to them. Don't refuse anyone who wants to borrow um, I would say that we need to hold this alongside um, other scriptures and uh, wisdom. God is revealing God's self to us through scripture, tradition and reason. And uh, this scripture has a point to it. I wouldn't want to disagree with Jesus, but um, Paul, for example, when he's about to be beaten, says, well, actually, I'm a Roman citizen. Don't beat me. Um, I think it's very much more important that we stand up for ourselves against our internal voices uh, against persecution and abuse from those who should be caring for us, our parents, our teachers, our clergy. Uh, we should seek justice, I would suggest, and not submit. But it's perhaps, um, if we take the rest of the Sermon on the Mount into account, this is uh, about our heart, our, uh, the, the inspiration and the, um, what's the word, the, the intent of uh, our reaction and response so we should recognise that we are humble, we should recognise that we should um, be open to other people being um, at least as important and, and caring for them and not seeking to um, humiliate and uh, reduce others, but to, to put them at least alongside, if not before us. Uh, I hope you understand how I'm trying to explain that, in fact, we shouldn't just be doormats, we shouldn't just accept abuse and uh, violence. Um, but we should be balanced and not simply demand our, our own way and our own rights, if that makes sense. Uh, and then the second, you've heard it was said, love your neighbour and hate your enemy. But we've got to love our enemies, um, because even tax collectors love those who love them. And uh, that's a challenge. Think of those in power. Um, look at Trump and the way he's feathering the nest, his own nest, the nest of those that uh, he wants to support and promote. Um, it can be a challenge, particularly for those who have a spirituality or faith system in their hearts, in their minds, uh, and they serve pretty much in any other organisation. Sometimes their own desires, names and objectives do align with those of the organisation, sometimes they don't. And this is saying, and even with the church, this is the case, of course, do we just submit and comply to um, the veil being drawn over abuse, or do we stand up and be counted and say this isn't acceptable, um, standing with the victims and not the perpetrators, um, for whatever ends, however much um, our own group, team or aims, you know, may falter. We've got to do the right thing. Don't uh, love our neighbours and hate our enemies, but stand up 
for justice, again, this is much fuller interpretation and all the more difficult, actually. So to the response back in evening prayer, All Saints to Advent. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel and afterwards receive me with glory. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel and afterwards receive me with glory. For I am always with you. You hold me by my right hand and afterwards receive me with glory. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel and afterwards receive me with glory. The Song of Mary. The righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. He has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will be blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm, and has scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones, and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel, to remember his promise of mercy, the promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. Make a lover keeper, three in one, one in three. We come to you at the end of this day, and we look back uh, across um, the last six, eight, ten hours, and uh, we thank you for those experiences uh, within the, that time period that have encouraged, enabled, um, inspired us, where um, gifts and talents we've gained through life, uh, we've been able to express uh, to others' satisfaction, to, to our own uh, pleasure, <clears throat> where uh, we know it's brought you um, joy, where people have been kind and encouraging to us, where we've had good news, we might have rested, or been creative, enjoyed the weather, creation, whatever it is that has uh, enabled us to walk tall and uh, smile. We thank you for those blessings. But it might have been a day of weeping and anxiety. We might have been put down and excluded and broken. We might be worried about the state of our health, the state of the world. Some of the issues we've mentioned already might be pressing on our hearts. We might feel distant from you, feel that we've let you, ourselves and others down. And if that's our experience at the close of day, we come to you praying for your healing, your restoration, a reconciliation and a, a sure and certain knowledge of your love and our worth before you and a resolution of the challenges we have been facing. From Release International, children in China are not permitted to attend any church or profess faith in Christ. Pray that Christian families will have the resources, conviction and encouragement they need to continue to nurture their children in the faith. Tony Christian A's online prayer diary. Scrolling through to today, we pray for churches across the United Kingdom committed to helping their local and global neighbours through social action. Pray they'll be able to um, recruit the volunteers they need and or staff to uh, continue to do that. Church brings prayers for the Holy Land. God of compassion and justice, we cry out to you for the wounded and those facing a lifetime of scars, for those seeking medical treatment where there is none, for medical and emergency personnel risking their own lives to save the lives of others. So, uh, Joint Public Unity Team, pray for Ukraine. We pray comfort for those who grieve and those who are fearful of Suffolk Diocese. We pray for uh, the Church of England in the first instance, uh, for well-being as families they step down, others who are implicated in any cover-ups, intended or otherwise. Uh, we pray for the victims of uh, John Smith. And we pray that justice will be done, that we will be gracious, however, and merciful in the application of that. We pray for openness and honesty uh, in reporting. And uh, we pray that uh, God-fearing and uh, God-honouring work within our denomination uh, is not does not suffer um, from this significant but in fact not uh, comprehensive and exhaustive uh, blight we've got some bad apples and we acknowledge that but there's a lot of good that's going on I pray that that good uh, does not suffer as a result of the bad beyond that which it must inevitably uh, we pray for Emma who is lead clergy person in all hallows and uh, Nancy Ditto as well as the ministers that work with them, their church walls and treasure and secretaries. 
We pray for our Bishop Martin as he moves to retirement. We pray for his replacement. They will be for pray cool ministry, cure of souls, um, God's mission in the world, and be able to secure increased support for us as we look after our buildings, uh, as we seek to maintain um, a professional um, class within our charity. That we may grow and be a blessing. Pray for our chicken rich and me as rural dean as we um, help the bishop out uh, with our local responsibilities for clergy and church wardens. Uh, and we have a prayer indeed in relation to the selection of a bishop. Heavenly Father, send us a bishop grounded in your love, a shepherd after your own heart, a follower of your way, and a teacher of your word through the wisdom and direction of your Holy Spirit. Enable us to recognise them that we appoint not the one we think we want, but the one you are calling through your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Yes, again, need a balance in those last two lines, not, not necessarily the one we think we want. Hmm. Pray for Joshua, who is a um, parish priest in Mukirehe Parish in Kagera Diocese, and Edson, who is training in Uganda from Lueru Diocese. We pray that they will be inspired as they see you working through them. Pray for the people and businesses associated with the addresses in Chediston of Wissett Road, Godfrey's Hill, Chediston Street, Nuns Hill, Linsett Road, Rumble Road, Lodge Lane, Hurst Road, and the Street in Wissett Street, Lodge Lane, Grays Lane, Nuns Hill, Farm Close, Banks Lane, Rumble Road, Chediston Road, in Specks, Hill, Poplars, Grub Lane, Stone Street, Hog Lane, Hall Lane, Church Lane, Hurst Road, Butts Road, Gavel Street, Nollers Lane, and in Linsett, Hales Road, Godfrey's Hill, Mary's Lane, St James's Lane, Rickery Lane, Chediston Road, Cratfield Road, the Street Church Lane. Pray for people living those address whom life is not going so well at the moment. We pray they will receive the help they need. They will be persistent to find it if they're looking for it and humble to receive it when offered. Where things are going well for people, may they uh, be prepared to offer their good uh, services, their skills to those around them. May we benefit as church, but other voluntary organisations and uh, communities, um, as we know, rely on such offers, generous offers of time and skills and money. Um, we pray for the businesses based in or serving those addresses, especially if they're involved in farming and hospitality, coming into this uh, quiet period. May they be able to um, make the right decisions now in terms of investment and repairs and maintenance and uh, companies they engage with to advertise and market themselves, their pricing, that they might see themselves through another year. Pray for all other businesses too, uh, that they might thrive and prosper. I pray a blessing on Jean, David, Brian, Carol, Molly, Felicity, Francis, Paul, Pam, Irene, Kim, Joan, Ginny, Jude, Paula, Claire, Cynthia, Rachel, John, and Veronica, and others we may know, for whom life is difficult at the moment. We pray for breakthrough and sovereign grace, bringing salvation, healing, and deliverance. And we thank you for all the lives of Barry, Beryl, Lynn, Peter, Brian, Audrey, Joan, Sue, Ben, Jeff, Vera, Rosemary. Special blessing on Jeff and Rosemary. Laid to rest today, Hunting Fields and Holton, respectively. Pray for... Uh, all these years mine for us at this time, including um, Samuel Seabury, giving thanks for his establishment of the Episcopal Church in America. Pray for his uh, successors in our own time, that they will be people of justice and hope. We pray for those who died suddenly unprepared through sickness, violence, neglect, accident, those who have taken their own lives, those who have died, you know, those who have known and loved and seen no longer, those who are so do faithfully here. We ask that according to your promise to humanity, grant us them a share in the eternal kingdom. We pray for ourselves and all who mourn the loss of loved one or a change in love, ch life chances. We pray we will hear your inspired words spoken through your incarnate mouth by the blessing of your spirit, and that that brings light in our darkness and order in our chaos. We ask these prayers, O God, in the name of your Son, and by the power of your Holy Spirit. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Pandaria had 
Pen dunia kuat lama sih fris pasal mayat asalah ada sama rapah yang asalah kalau mahal kau kumarkan ia syas. Pahat yang ia kiri bahu ramai usah Allah ini. Tapi dia syas sama ada bahu mukun alak. Jadi Allah hadis syarif asam akala. Cap ramai asmar hati yang nak mahal bahu musim ia syas kalau hadi alas na irikas em fisik dia alas na para mani nak kurmani kalau mahu usah fisik dia syas. Almighty God, you have knit together your elect in one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of your Son, Christ our Lord. Give us grace so to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living, that we may come to those inexpressible joys that you have prepared for those who truly love you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Uniting our prayers with the whole company of heaven as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May Christ, who has opened the kingdom of heaven, bring us to reign with him in glory. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Goodbye to those joining us on YouTube.